If you have sales data for a period of time, you can use the data to predict your future sales. On top of that, presenting the data in a chart will help you quickly identify the pattern of your sales data. Hello everyone, welcome to Excel Demi, your day-to-day -day Excel and VVA tutorial helpline. This is Hadiul Basher and today I'll demonstrate how to create a monthly trend chart in Excel. For this video, I'll use Microsoft Excel 365. A trend chart is a chart that shows the general pattern of the data over time. You can add a trend line to your chart. This trend line can be a straight or curved line showing the direction of the usual values that will help you predict the future of the data. This is a business data set. This includes the month and the sales values. I have predicted the sales values using different functions and created a monthly trend chart. I will show you four different methods to predict the sales values and create a monthly trend chart using this data set. For the first method, I will use the forecast.linear function to predict the sales values. Now go to cell D14, type equal forecast.linear The forecast.linear function calculates the future value along a linear trend by using existing values. Press tab to autocomplete the function. As the x argument, that is the data point for which you want to predict a value, choose month 10. Place a comma. As the known y's argument, also known as dependent range of data, select cell C5 to C13. Press F4 to lock the cell reference. Place a comma. Next, for the known excess, which is the independent range of data, select cells B5 to B13. Press F4 to lock the cell reference. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. In this way, you will get the predicted sales value for month 10. Now use the autofill feature to get the predicted sales values for the rest of the data set. As you have the sales and the predicted sales values, you are ready to create the chart. Select cells B4 to D16. Move to the Insert tab. From the Charts section, click on Insert Scatter or Bubble Chart. This opens different options of Scatter and Bubble Chart. In my case, I'll select the Scatter with its straight lines and markers. You can see a Scatter chart is created. This represents the sales and the predicted sales values, but the chart is not continuous. The data point for month 9 is missing. To insert the data point of month 9, you need to add the data point in the predicted sales values, so select cells D13, type equal, and choose cell C13. Hit enter. In this way, the data point is added both in the worksheet and the chart. Now to create the trend line, click on the chart area. Next, click on this plus sign, which is the chart elements, and at the bottom of the list, you will find trend line. Check the trend line. This opens Add Trend Line window. In the Add a Trend Line based on Series option, Sales is highlighted. As I want to create a trend line based on the sales, so I am clicking on OK. And you can see a linear trend line of sales is created in this chart. Now, if you want to change the style of this chart, you can do this in two ways. You can either click on this brush icon, that is the chart styles and select a style according to your choice. Alternatively, you can move to the chart design contextual tab and from the chart styles, click on this drop down icon and choose a style. In my case, I will select style 8. If you want to remove the grid lines, click on the plus sign and uncheck grid lines. Finally, set the chart title as monthly trend chart. That's it, this completes our trend chart. In this method, I will apply the forecast.ets function to predict the future sales. Go to cell D14, type equal forecast.ets. The forecast.ets function returns the forecasted value for a specific future target date using exponential triple smoothing method. Press tab to autocomplete the function. As a target date argument, as you want to predict the sales for month 10, select cell B14. Place a comma for the values argument. Select the known values that are the values of cells C5 to C13. Press F4 to lock the cell reference. Next, as a timeline argument, select cells B5 to B13. Press F4 to lock this cell reference. Place a comma. As the optional seasonality argument, type 1. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. In this way, you will get the predicted sales using the forecast.ets function. Now, let me use the autofill feature to get all the predicted sales. To create a continuous curve, use the value of C13 in cell D13. Select cell D13, type equal, and select cell C13. Hit enter. Let's create the chart now. Select cells B4 to D16. Move to the Insert tab. From the Charts section, click on Insert Scatter or Bubble Chart. 
choose the same curve that is the scatter with straight lines and markers again. You can see the chart is created with the sales value and the predicted values. In order to add the trend line to this chart, I will use the exact same process that I have demonstrated in the first method. Now click on this plus sign, check trend line. In the add trend line window, sales is highlighted again. So I am clicking on OK to create the chart. You can see a linear series of sales is representing the trend line in this chart. And unlike the forecast.linear function, the predicted sales figures using the forecast.ets function don't follow a linear path line. In fact, the predicted sales are showing exponential characteristics. This time, I will stick with the default style of the chart. However, I will set the chart title as monthly trend chart. And this is the monthly trend chart using the forecast.ets function. As I mentioned earlier, the values returned by the forecast.ets function have varied a lot. This is because the forecast.ets method follows an exponential manner while returning the values. On the other hand, go back to the forecast.linear function worksheet and you can see that the forecast.linear function has returned the values that follow a linear fashion. The reason is that the forecast.linear function follows the linear algorithm while predicting the future values. In this method, I will use the trend function. From the data set, you can assume that our sales values are not following a linear pattern as the values are increasing and decreasing. However, by applying the trend function, we can get an idea of what would happen if the sales figures followed a linear trend. Select sales D5 to D16, type equal trend function. The trend function returns numbers in a linear trend matching known data points using the least squares method. Press tab to autocomplete the function. As a known wise argument, select cell C5 to C16, place a comma, and as a known excess argument, select cells B5 to B16. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. One thing you should notice that I am using Excel 365. This is why by pressing enter, I have got the array values. But in case you are using an older version of Excel, you should press Ctrl, Shift and Enter keys together to get the array values. Now as our dataset is complete, let's create the chart. Select the cells B4 to D16. Move to the Insert tab. In the Charts section, click on Recommended Charts. This opens Insert Chart window. You will get different recommended charts in this section. In my case, I am choosing the Line Chart. Click on OK to create the Line Chart. You can see a line chart is created and the sales figures are presented in this curve and the linear trend is presented in this straight line. Now set the chart title as monthly trend chart. This completes our chart. In this method, we have the month and the corresponding sales percentage data. We will monitor the trend of sales percentage month to month. This will help you to identify the rise, falls, in addition to the steady state in the sales condition. Then we will create a line chart with Excel shapes to better represent our data set. First of all, copy the sales values of B5 to C16. By pressing Ctrl plus C, go to cell E5 and press Ctrl plus V to paste the values. The logic behind the up down and equal is simple. If the sales percentage of the current cell is greater than the previous cell, then we will press the value of the current cell in the up section. If it is less than the previous month, then we will set the value of the current cell in the down section. And if the two values are equal, we will set the value of the current cell in the equal section. Before doing that, in order to organize our chart easily, I need to fill the up down and the equal column with some temporary values to create the chart. And after creating the chart, we will replace the temporary values with the actual values. Now select the cells G5 to G16, type 20 and press Ctrl Shift Enter to pass the value across the selected cells. This is the temporary values for the up section. Similarly, insert 60 and 80 as the temporary values of the down and the equal section. Select cells H5 to H16 type 60 and press Ctrl Shift Enter. Then select cells I5 to I16, type 80 and press Ctrl Shift Enter. Now we can create the chart. To do so, select cells E4 to I16, move to the Insert tab. From the chart section, click on Insert Line or Area Chart. This open different options of line and area chart. In my case, I'll select line with markers. 
This is the basic view of our chart. We need to customize this chart to create our desired chart. First of all, I want to add custom markers to this chart. To do so, move to the insert tab, click on this drop down icon of the illustrations and select shapes. You will find different available shapes here. In my case, I want to represent the up values with the upward facing arrows, the down values with the downward facing arrows and the equal value with the oval shape. From the block arrows, select the upward pointing arrow and click here to insert the arrow. Similarly, insert the two other shapes. Go to the insert tab in the illustration section, click on shapes, choose the down arrow, click here and the down arrow is added. Finally, insert the oval shape, move to the insert tab, click on this drop down icon, click on shapes, from the basic shapes, click on oval, click here to insert the shape. As I want to use these shapes as a marker of this chart, we need to resize the size of these shapes. Move to the Shape Format Contextual tab. In the Size section, you can set the shape dimensions. Set both the dimensions as 0 0.1. You can see the oval shape is resized. Now to resize the arrows, select the upward arrow, press Ctrl and select the downward arrow. Now set the size as 0 0.1. In this way, all the shapes are resized. Next, I want to change the color of the shapes. I want to fill the upward facing arrow with green color, the downward facing arrow with red color and the oval shape with orange color. Let's begin with the oval shape. From the Shape Format Contextual tab, in the Shape Styles, go to Shape Fill. Here you will find different available options to color your shape. In this case, from the standard colors, I am selecting orange. Next, change the color of the upward shape. Select the upward shape, go to the shape fill again and choose green. Finally, select the down facing arrow, move to the shape fill, choose red. Now we are ready to replace the default markers with our custom markers. First of all, I will change the marker of the up series with the upward facing arrow. Select the upward facing arrow, press Ctrl plus C to copy the shape, click on a marker of the up data and press Ctrl plus V to paste the up shape. You can see the chart is updated with the new marker. Now repeat this process for the down arrow and oval shape. Select the down arrow, press Ctrl plus C to copy the shape, click on a marker on the down series. Now press Ctrl plus V to paste the shape. Lastly, select the oval shape, press Ctrl plus C to copy the shape, click on a mark on the equal data series and press Ctrl plus V to paste the shape. In this way, all the shapes are added to this chart. Now, I need only the sales series to represent in this chart so I can remove all the lines from the up, down and the equal series. To do so, double click on the line of the up series. As a result, the format data series appears. From the series options, click on fill and line. In the line segment, click on no line. You can see the line for the up data series is removed from this chart. To remove the line for the down and the equal data series, click on this drop down icon on the series options. Here you will find the available options to customize this chart. Now click on series down and in the line section, choose no line. Repeat the process for the series equal. Click on this drop down icon. Go to series equal and click on no line. In this way, all the unwanted lines are removed from this chart. Next, I want to replace the markers of the sales series from this chart. To do so, click on this drop down icon on the series options. Go to series sales in the marker section. Click on marker options and choose none. This removes the markers from the sales series. And now I can place my custom markers in the sales series. To do so, I need to replace the temporary values of the up, down and the equal columns with the real values. Click on this cross icon to close the format data series window. Place the chart here to get a clear view of the data set. I want to set the first value of the sales in the up section. So type equal and select cell F5 and hit enter. To set the next values in the appropriate up, down or equal section, you can use the if function. Go to cell G6, type equal if, the if function checks whether a condition is met and returns one value if true and another value if false. For the logical test argument, I will check if the value of the cell F6 is greater than F5. So click on F6, type greater than and select cell F5. Place a comma as a value if true argument, type F6. Place another comma and for the value if false argument, type the NA function. 
the init function returns the error value in it that is value not available. Close the parenthesis of the init function. Finally, close the parenthesis of the if function. This formula will check if the value in cell F6 is greater than F5. If so, then the if function will return the value of the cell F6 in the cell G6. Otherwise, the if function will return the value of any function. Now hit enter. You can see a 60% is greater than 40%, so the if function has returned 60% in the G6 cell. Similarly, type the down condition in cell H6, type equal, if, for the logical test argument, select cell F6, less than sign, and select cell F5. Place a comma, as the value if true argument, select cell F6. Place a comma, and as the value if false argument, type the inner function. Close the parenthesis and close the parenthesis of the if function. Now hit enter. You can see as 60% is not less than 40%, so the if function has returned any. Similarly, set the condition for equal in cell i6. Type equal if as a logical test argument, select cell f6 equal f5, place a comma as the value if true argument, select cell f6 place a comma, and as the value of false argument, type the inner function. Close the parenthesis of the inner function. Finally, close the parenthesis of the if function. Now hit enter. You can see as 60% is not equals to 40%, so the if function is returning any. Now use the autofill feature to use the formulas across this data set. Click on this autofill icon, move to cell H6, and click on this autofill icon. Finally, move to cell G6 and click on the autofill icon. As we have manually set the 40% in the up section, so for the first row of this data set, so our down and the equal section will remain blank. So select the cells H5 and I5 and press the delete key to delete the values. Our data set is kind of ready now, but it will look great if we can hide the inner functions. You can hide the inner functions by applying conditional formatting. To do so, select cells G5 to I16 from the home tab in the styles section, click on conditional formatting. This will open conditional formatting options. Click on new rule and the new formatting rule window appears. In the select a rule type window, click on this option. In the edit the rule description, format values where this formula is true field, type the formula equal is na g5. This formula will find out the cells that contains the na values. Click on the format section and this opens the format cells window. In the font option, go to the color field and click on this drop down arrow. Set the theme colors as white and now click on OK. Finally, click on OK. In this way, our dataset is now free of the any functions. Now place the chart here to edit the chart. Right click on the marker of the equal data series to add the data labels and go to add data labels. Similarly, add data labels for the up and the down series. To set the position of the data labels, double click on the data labels and this will open format data labels window. From the label position, click on above. This will set the data labels of the up data series above the markers. Now to change the other data labels, click on this drop down icon beside the label options. Choose series down and click on below. Finally, to set the data labels of the equal data series, go to the label options again and click on series equal data labels. Set the position below. Now set the chart title as a monthly trend chart. And this completes our chart. I have demonstrated the step-by-step -step guide for creating a monthly trend chart in Excel. Hopefully, you can apply this knowledge to create your own monthly trend chart according to your requirement and convenience. You can download the practice workbook from the video description to sharpen your Excel skills. Feel free to leave any questions, suggestions, or feedback in the comment section below. To check out our Excel blogs, you can visit exceldemy.com. For more content like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching our video. Bye!